First, to clear up a little confusion, pimps, I know the title says ugly games and ugly women, but no, this is not the Forspoken video. That's next week. This video is all about how very recently my magnum opus Y prototype will make you stop got age-gated, which gutted the views harder than Microsoft just gutted its studios. Susan, why do you smite me? Was it the shocking imagery in the first 15? The idea of feeding the ducks? Was it me? Was it me? No. I know what it is. You don't like busty anime hoes, you bitch! And you know what? I almost made a Dragon's Crown video out of spite, but seeing as I am the most humble and accommodating man I know, instead, I've prepared something I think old sussy baka will appreciate and monetize much more handsomely. MasterCard Amex Chase Travel Credit Card. When I was but a young, twitchy fleek, Papa Zoid told me, Does the road, American dream. There are two fiecks you must know in life. One, if you have to wonder, do not plunger. And the two, the fogly ones work harder. Find the fogly one, son. But what I've realized after all these years is that he was actually talking about video games. Ugly video games. And I'm not talking about that trying to have that Sony treadmill shine but ending up looking like Miss Piggy because he ran out of budget. I'm talking about those Frankenstein games. The games that are intentionally made so ugly that you wouldn't even show them to your second cousins. That born wrong but built to last factory guarantee when a game purposefully chooses to have a face like a Kia Soul so that they can have gameplay like a Goddamn Corvette. You feel me, pimp? RimWorld, Project Zomboid, Door Fortress, Kerbal Space Program, Kenshi, Power Washing Simulator? Ooh, that feels nice. Ooh. You know what all of these games have in common? They have faces like a drop pie. Real brown baggers, if you will. You look at these games, and on a superficial level, you just want to apologize to them on God's behalf, because no game deserves to look this fucked up. But here's the thing, these games are going to be the ride of your life because they actually have to try to impress you with what they can do rather than how well they can paint the barn. Because make no mistake about it, no matter how much pretty paint AAA games try to throw on, it won't change the fact that they're dead inside. Whereas in contrast, take a game like Teardown for example. I mean, not the worst graphics, especially coming off of Kenshi, but all I'm saying is put it next to a fucking donkey and I won't know which is which. Oh, hey! <laughs> oh, oh, I'm so alone. What was that? Nothing I said. Teardown is compensated by building out the most complex destruction sandbox since Red Faction Gorilla came out back in 800 BC. Or look at Project Zomboid. This old hag has graphics like a goddamn swamp donkey. However, they compensate by having some of the most mechanically complex survival elements in a zombie game instead of just ripping off rust like Seven Days to Die did. Deep Cock Galactic dumbed down the graphics of Left 4 Dead so that they could build out a whole procedurally generated destructible cave system where you shoot bugs and plow holes with the boys. Oh shit, I'm sorry. Sorry for what? And Factorio compensates for their horrible graphics by giving you autism. Hey. Now would you rather have that or Ooh, I can count the peach fuzz. <laughs> Pretty games don't even have to pursue good gameplay mechanics anymore because most of the dense motherfuckers that have migrated into this hobby see colorful graphics and a gosling mode protagonist then flock into that Venus flytrap like a fatherless man to an e-thought. Hell, I get it! Any port in a storm? And sure, in February you can do this when all the pretty new games are releasing and you won't give this two-bagger a second look. But then July comes. You're two months into a three month drought. Ain't a new game on the calendar till maybe August. But in this economy, <sniffs> releases are getting kicked back all the time. Could be October before you see a drop. A sweet, prime, curvaceous, realistic, beautiful graphics that you can't seem to live without. But at the same time, you're starting to taste the iron in your mouth, boy. You're pissing flaming hot frying oil and your eyes lack the lube needed to blink. Shit's getting primal. Now when you look at Kenshi's butterface having ass, you go, mm. And so you come back to me, the Grand Eldazoid in your hour of desperation, asking, Will you show me? And I go, I'd be right happy to. Because me and the pimps only want to bring your soul to salvation. Yes, sir. 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 In 5, 10, 20 years, you'll remember the swamp donkey like Factorio with reverence. Because crack is always crack, baby. That shit don't expire. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But now that Verizon Forbidden Fuckfest is hitting the wall like a goddamn flappy bird and now it's looking like Krusty the goddamn clown in comparison, it will fade out of your mind like tears in the rain.
And that brings us to what we're reviewing today, Bright Memory. God damn, that is a, that is a nice gun right there. This fucking fidelity's got me harder than a Dark Souls game. That's it. Bye, bye, bye. bye.